Okay, now we're going to build upon what we just did in the previous video. For every f in L1 log, we define the distribution tf that x phi and returns the integral of f phi over i. And we just saw that this is a distribution. It will be called the regular distribution associated to the function f in N1 log. So, before we go any further, I would like to stress that not all distributions are regular distributions. For instance, the Dirac distribution does not come from a L1 log function. You will not find an f that will allow you to write delta as tf. It won't be of the form integral of a function in L1 log times phi. However, for every function in L1 log, I will have a regular distribution that is associated to it. Better than this, the mapping that takes a function f and associates the regular distribution tf will be injective. Can I remind you of something? Remember when we injected r in c in the introduction? Kind of the same thing, right? Okay, so all the functions in L1 log can now be represented by a distribution, and that distribution will be called the regular distribution associated to f. So what we have is really an injection, but we will write this as an inclusion. And again, what we explain in the introduction is that we did, we kind of use the same trick with r and c. r is injected in C, and we say that R is included in C. It's a little bit of, of, it's of an abuse here, uh, but it's because of the injection, we can actually identify all of the elements of L1 log with their corresponding uh, element, the regular distribution that is associated to F. So we have L1 log included in D prime. Which means that uh, now, when we have tf, we can just simplify in terms of notation and just say f. And we'll say the distribution f or the function f, right? If you have a function in one log, all of a sudden we say it's a distribution. We should say, based on f, we can associate a regular distribution tf, and tf is the distribution we're talking about. But instead of doing so, we'll just say f, is a distribution. I would like to note something. When we use the bracket notation, right, f phi, meaning again tf phi, but when we do f phi, f is in L1 log, and phi is a bump function, a test function in di, right? And, and again, uh, while well, the definition is right here, that's the integral of f phi over i. As you know, di, well, I mean, if you take phi, well, you square it, uh, it's still going to be in d, and of course, it's going to be integrable, which means that phi being in d is also in L2. L2 is a much bigger space than d. Now, not all functions of L1 log are in L2. We have plenty of examples of functions that are L1 log and not in L2. But what we do have, actually, is some of the functions in, L, in, in L1 log will be in L2. As a matter of fact, all functions in L2 will also be in L1 log. So let's talk about the functions that are in L2. So if f is in L2, then all of a sudden I have f and phi that are both in L2. And as you can see, uh, we had used these bracket notations before in the CIP class in the previous semester. We said uh, the bracket notation for two elements of L2 is the integral of that product. Well, as you can see here, the inner product of L2 and the notations that we just introduced with the bracket notations for the distributions are perfectly consistent. So now, what we need to do is to define some operations on the distributions. And what we'll need to do is to make sure that the, that the operations we're defining 
will generalize what we have in L1 log. In other words, when I will, defi when I will define the plus for two distributions, it better be consistent with the definition of the sum of functions in L1 log, because what I want to do now is to extend all of these operations that we had on L1 log to the distribution. Maybe not all of them, because some of them it won't work, but I mean, most of them or many of them, I would like to extend from N1 log to D prime. So that's what we're going to do in the next video.